Hey everyone, Jesse here with the Wandering Manus channel. And today I wanna to give you an owner's walkthrough of my 2021 Geo Pro by Rockwood, which is a Forest River RV product. I wanna give you this review as an actual owner. This is unbiased. Uh, I have no uh, sponsorship or any other opinion other than my own about this product. I've owned it now for about a month and a half. I've taken it on two trips. So this is really an initial quality type review and walkthrough. So if you are thinking of purchasing one, uh, it'll give you an idea of what you're in for. And at the end of the video, I'll give you kind of my overall review and my thoughts on it and whether I think you should purchase it or not. So stand by, let's check it out. So before I started this walkthrough, I do want to go ahead and explain to you what I was looking for when I purchased this particular unit so you get an understanding if you don't have one, what you'd be in for. I do have a primary pull vehicle, which is an SUV. So I needed something that had a gross vehicle weight of less than 5,000 pounds. That was a big deal for me because otherwise I'd have to change my vehicle for pulling. I also needed something that could accommodate a family of five, two adults and three kids all under the age of 10. And I also wanted something that was non uh, slide out. And I have a weird reason why I don't want to slide out. I, you know, if there was a reason for me to pull in and I needed to take a nap or something, or I wanted to look a little more incognito, I had the ability to do that without a slide. You know, if you have a slide out, you kind of have to use it. Otherwise, um, you know, you, you can't really get in it very effectively. So anyway, weird, but that, that was my thing. So anyway, that was it. So if you have the sim similar criteria, this will work for you. And I just wanted to share that with you before we started the actual uh, walkthrough. All right, so again, this is the 2021 uh, Geo Pro 19BH, which is the 20 foot bunkhouse model. It's unloaded vehicle weight is 3,209 pounds with a hitch weight of 425 pounds. When I made my initial assessment of this particular model or which one to get, uh, that was a very important factor. A lot of the, uh, what was deemed as ultralight version of trailers, and I would argue that this is definitely in that class, typically were at the unloaded vehicle weight of about 4,000 some odd pounds. But once you started to add anything into it, uh, water, the gross vehicle weight on there was significantly higher. Now I know that that's an arbitrary number because it can change, but I didn't want to be over that. So I was very cognizant when I first purchased the unit uh, of that as being a very specific uh, requirement of mine. So the, the exterior of this is 20 feet long and eight, 20 feet and eight inches long. And it's about 92 inches wide. Uh, it's a little shy of 10 feet. I think it's nine foot, 10 inches. It has uh, a freshwater, gray water and black tank. The freshwater is 31 gallons and the gray and black are both 30 gallons. So to give you a start with the initial review, let's start with the front. So first thing right out of the gate is it does come with a power tongue jack, which is a really good feature. I really love that. The power tongue is significantly easier to mess with than anything else. Uh, it, it's a little slow, but it does the job and you ain't got to do a lot of cranking on it. So that's, that's really great. It does come with the, you know, all the standard trailer towing accessories with it. One of the two features on the front that I did like uh, was one, the lighting. So you'll see here, there's actually a light on the front of the uh, hitch here. And then there's actually a light switch over here on the side, which is for this strip light right here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip in now a video of what that looks like at night, but when you're backing up the trailer at night or backing up your vehicle at night to the trailer, it does incredible with lighting up the whole front and uh, actually adds a nice light for if you're gonna to need to do any work outside the trailer after dark. So the vehicle has two uh, LP tanks here in the front. They're both 20 pound LP tanks. And one of the nice features of this particular trailer is that inside this uh, component here, you've got them both tied with a regulator in the middle. Now the regulator, you can select the left tank or the right tank or both tanks. So if you want to know when one is going to be running out, you can simply uh, have, you know, select it on one and then when it runs out, you manually switch over. Or if you're concerned about all night running, uh, you can uh, put it in the middle and let it run. The components that run on this, uh, depending on which one, and I'll show you later, but there are several different components that can run on gas. Some can also run on electric and uh, the uh, propane heater is, is only on the LP, obviously. Also in the front here is a battery bank. It, does it did come with one battery, but it does have space for two, 
and it did come with the connectors to uh, daisy chain them both together. That is going to be uh, power for the RV, for the power tongue jack, all the interior components, and everything that's uh, required for the 12 volt if you're using, uh, you're not on shore power and you're using the uh, solar panels, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. All right, so this is gonna be the front right of the trailer on, on the door side. And on the front side, you'll see there's a pass-through. Now, the pass-through is a great feature. It is uh, completely through, does open on both sides and it's keyed to the same as the door. As a matter of fact, everything that's got a key on this trailer is the same key, which is a really great feature. But one thing that I love is that uh, it does go all the way through and it's got ample space in there. Uh, you can't fit a bicycle or nothing in there, but as far as all your RV accessories, anything you may need, uh, great space for that. All right, here on the front right is going to be a solar on the side connector. This, this powers into the unit. If you have an additional solar panel that you want to uh, you know camp out with on the ground you got an additional one it is rated for 20 more amps of solar so something that you'll see here is that each one of these doors and storage has a magnetic con component at the top that allows the uh, door to hang up open that's going to be really great feature when you're trying to get everything moved and open and you don't have to worry about slamming stuff uh, it adds as a great door stop so underneath the trailer you're going to see it's aluminum based construction which is great, it, that's, that's what gives it its very lightweight. You'll see the four frame mounted stabilizers and along the front of the trailer, you're gonna see the fold out entry steps, which are really great and, uh, and are very convenient and very easy to maneuver. You'll also see underneath here, it does come with a spare tire and it does have alloy, alloy wheels with a, a torsion axle. So the torsion axle uh, is really great. So far, it seems as if it will handle a little bit of off-road. I wouldn't go too crazy with it, but it seems to be working very well in that. So on the front door here, you're gonna see that it does have a uh, grab handle and it is uh, keyed, like I said, for the same all the way around the trailer. The key itself has a keyless entry lock as well, which uh, unfortunately my dealer uh, kind of messed up. They give you a code out of the gate and they did end up giving me the wrong code, but uh, oh well, I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, on the front here, you'll see there's the actual porch lighting, uh, the vent, of course, for the uh, microwave that's inside. And uh, you'll also see the outdoor speaker. The outdoor speaker is not awesome, but it's not bad either. Uh, so it's, it's great, it is Bluetooth, and I'll show you that when we go inside. So something else you're gonna notice is that there is uh, the windows here. If you notice that they are frameless windows, so the ones that do open, which are a majority of them, except the front window, the frameless windows here uh, pop out, and you don't have the rubber edges that can get eaten up in the sun and it's a really great feature of the trailer. I think it's kind of underrated, but it's definitely something that's nice. You don't get water in there and, and damage when those seals start to get rotten over, over time. So the wheels are alloy wheels, which are great. Um, does come with some really nice tires and my particular model, I'm not sure if this is universal, but it does have a uh, uh, setup with t uh, tire pressure monitoring system. It is a, a Bluetooth type wireless type system. So that's great, uh, it, you set it in the dash, you don't have to worry about wiring any additional stuff and you can turn it on. It works pretty good, it is a little weird to figure out at first, so you do need to kind of get that worked out, but it's, uh, it's definitely a nice thing that comes with the trailer. On the outside is a little mini kitchen area. You'll see at the bottom right here, uh, the LP connect. Now that connects directly to your LP tanks for your griddle that comes with the trailer. I'm going to include in now a picture of this but uh, this is essentially what the griddle looks like assembled. So you see here also the 13-foot uh, awning that's on the front. It is a power awning, which is really easy to utilize. You just go inside, push a button, it comes out, it comes back in. Uh, it does also have these arms that you can lift up and down, which are really neat uh, to adjust the angle of the awning. I'm going to go ahead and also include it in a picture of the awning now, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. So you may notice on the rear of the trailer, there is no bumper, so there's no way to add a bike rack, although there is accessories that you can get to put the bike rack on the front hitch component. Uh, but that is something I think you need to either purchase through uh, Rockwood or the dealer. On the back right and the bottom right, you'll see that there is a flush for the black tank. It's a really nice feature. You just hook a hose up to when you're flushing the system out and allows you to uh, also flush the black tank when you're doing that. You also notice the ladder here, which uh, is up to a 250 pound uh, person, or at least it's what it's rated at. And uh, you'll see that it goes up to the roof, which is fully walkable. All right, so now I'm up on the roof. You'll see the max air vent in the back. That's actually in the bathroom. And you'll see there's also the skylight for the shower, uh, which is great if you're tall. I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you're over six foot tall, that actually is a really life-saving feature for the shower. 
but you'll see all the standard components. It's a very well put together roof. It is sealed very, very well. I think you can see some of the seals here. And uh, it does have, of course, the air conditioner in the middle, and uh, which is fully accessible if you need to uh, get up here and do any maintenance or any other components. You'll also see the 150 watt solar panel with which uh, goes to a thousand watt con inverter, which is great. And then you'll also see the Wi-Fi Ranger there at the end uh, that allows you to extend the Wi-Fi, which is a uh, really neat component. I've yet to use it yet. Unfortunately, this particular model, unless you ask for it, does not come with the, uh, the LTE connection for it. And I'll show you that in a little bit, but there are multiple models. I think you can upgrade it, but if you don't ask for it, uh, does not come with that. So on the rear of the trailer, you're gonna see what is known as a bike door. This actually goes to the bunkhouse area and allows you to open it up and uh, gain access, either escape, you know, getting out of the trailer as an extra, uh, you know, door instead of having to climb out of the window and say an emergency. But it also allows you to store, well, exactly what it says, bicycles, right? So with the bike door open, you can see access into the trailer. You'll see the bottom component, which is gonna be a storage uh, area that you can access from inside and outside the trailer. And you actually have access to that bottom bunk. However, if I go up here and unfold the bunk, like I'm about to show you, uh, you'll see that it gives you some extra space in there. So if you reach in here and of course fold this bunk up, you probably have to take the actual bunk out and fold up the actual bunk, which has a connection. You actually have full range space in here to fit uh, bicycles or anything else that you would wanna fit. So it's kind of nice. It's a neat little component area that you can store stuff. And uh, that way, if you couldn't travel along, say you don't have a, uh, a bicycle rack on your truck or something like that, you could easily bring all that with you in here. So underneath the trailer on the bike door side is going to be the access to the black tank and gray tank dump. It's pretty straightforward there and relatively easy to get to. As you push forward on the trailer, you'll see that there is the actual camp power plug for the main power. It is a 30 amp connection and several other components over here that are easily accessed outside. Before I show you that, I will show you, of course, under the front is gonna be the freshwater dump. And right there is the sewer hose uh, container, which is really nice because there's no bumper on this trailer. So that allows you to quickly walk up and open up and access your sewer hose and keep all that stored. That way you don't have to keep that in the uh, pass-through storage. On this side is gonna be the fill for the fresh water and of course cable TV access, city water connection. And when you go to winterize the vehicle, there's gonna be the antifreeze inlet uh, for winter winterizing. Also accessible outside the trailer is gonna be the water heater, which is pretty easily accessed by pulling that tab. And it gives you full access to the water heater if you need to do any maintenance on that. Of course, the other side is gonna be the actual pass-through again. And up here is the control for the docking light that I was showing you earlier. Now that we've seen the exterior of the trailer, I'm gonna go ahead and move inside and show you all the features on the inside. So the actual door itself, it had, does have a screen door component. And of course, as you're entering, you do have a handle to grab onto. When you first come into the cabin, the first thing you'll see right here is the living area for adults. It's gonna be a queen bed. It is slightly smaller than a queen, but it is in fact a queen bed and has the beautiful front window right there. The front window does not open, but uh, it does have, you do have a side window over here on the left that does, so that's a great feature. Once you go in here, you'll see that there's plenty of room for the sleeping components. It does have two top areas right here for storing additional things. And one of the neat features of the bed is actually right over here. So you'll notice on the front end, you know, you need to charge your phones, whatever components. You have a 120 plug here that you push up on. And now you have access to two 120 outlets and two USB plugs that are accessible on either 12 volt or uh, when you're on shore power. Below the bed, you'll see two uh, storage containers. And of course it comes with a uh, fire extinguisher as well, standard. So on the front of the cabin here, right at the beginning, you'll see that there's the television. This is a 12 volt television. It does also have uh, a DVD player built in and uh, it, it works okay. The audio on it is not great, uh, but uh, you know, for a TV that you really should be outside enjoying the outdoors isn't a bad deal. Up at the top here, you'll see the controls for the stereo system. It does allow you to have uh, Bluetooth connectivity and of course an AM FM radio. It does also have, uh, looks like a USB connector for uh, auxiliary connections. 
Uh, there is a zone, zone one and zone two control. Zone one is the interior speakers and there's two located above the bed. And then of course, zone two, I believe is the exterior speaker. And you can either have one or the other on or both on at the same time. There's also the control for the Wi-Fi Ranger right here, which allows you to turn that on and access uh, the, the extender for the Wi-Fi. I have not been able to use that yet, so I don't really have an in-depth review on that. I haven't been to a park with Wi-Fi, but my understanding it works pretty good. As I mentioned on the roof, this is a model that is just for Wi-Fi ranging. They do make other models. I don't know if that's something you can upgrade to, uh, but I, I wasn't aware that there's no LTE capability to extend that with this Wi-Fi Ranger, but that is available with that product range. So looking back at the rest of the cabin from the bed is of course the controls when you first go in. The controls are pretty straightforward. It does have uh, quite a myriad of controls. So you do have uh, uh, connectors here that allow you to see uh, what the fill levels are on either your battery, fresh water, black water, or gray water, and all your controls for your lights. So you do have your interior lights, uh, you do have your porch light, your awning light, and the step light, which the step light is an interior light. This is your awning control that allows you to easily push in and out on the awning and allows you to bring it in and out. So you do have other controls for your water pumps and your water heaters uh, all right here. So this is going to be your water pump itself. So if you're not on a pressurized system like city water, you can utilize the pump. We did it this last weekend and it was great. There's also the ability for you to turn on your, your water heater, whether it be on electric, if you're on some sort of shore power, if you're, or I believe if you're on 12 volt as well. And then of course it does have the ability to use gas. So if you're out kind of uh, out on the loan, you don't wanna use your electricity to power the water heater, you go ahead and flip that bad boy on on gas and you're good to go. There also is a tank heater underneath. So if you're in a very cold weather environment, I live in Texas, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, well, at least not normally, but if you're in a very cold weather environment, my understanding that's gonna be awesome. It has a heater underneath that heats your tank so you don't have to worry about your water freezing. So you're gonna have a two person dinette here. Uh, it, it's not super spacious, but it's not small either. The two person dinette was great for a little kid sitting there and, and for me and my wife to sit and kind of mess around, it wasn't a big deal. Um, and above that is gonna be some more storage and pantry space for when you're trying to store your groceries and so on. Um, it's relatively straightforward and is passed all the way through all of the actual uh, cabinets. Now, the bed, this is actually turns into a bed. Now, if you can see, it's not a very long bed, so I probably wouldn't put anyone more than a kid on here, uh, but it definitely will fit at least one child. Uh, it may even two, depending on how big the child is. If I move down here, you'll see that there are some additional storage components underneath here. So you do have some storage underneath. And then below here is going to be your inverter controls, and uh, I believe these are also your, your mounts for your actual bed. So the kitchen's pretty nice. Up top, you do have a couple of cabinets that allow you to store some things. It's not a whole lot of space, but it's definitely not bad, as well as to store dishes and such. Then, of course, you have your uh, Go Power uh, controller. This is for the actual power. This gives you the amount of battery on your solar panels. I just turned them on for being off, but I'm at 87 already. It does give you the ability to boost those. And if you have multiple batteries, you can select through which one uh, and so on. It is Bluetooth controlled. The whole trailer, as a matter of fact, uh, the awning, uh, the Ranger, this, uh, all of these things are Bluetooth compatible with uh, your phone. It allows you to be able to control all those things or check status from there. You do have a, a, an oven vent hood here. And uh, it's a pretty nice sink. It is like a stainless type sink um, that flows in here. It's got a nice basin size for the trailer size itself. You do also have a couple of other cabinets and then below here is going to be the actual heater and uh, it does have kind of a nice little bottle uh, opener cut here. So this cover here, once you lift it up, um, if I can lift it up, yeah, if you lift it up, you'll see that there are three burners here that are gas burners. Uh, I have utilized them. They work pretty well. I didn't use them to cook in. I, I'm more of an outdoor cooker, but that is something if you're interested in cooking in here, it does also have an oven, which is great. Um, also gas, uh, lighting that stuff was pretty easy to do. So up here you do have a microwave. That's nice. It is not powered on the 12 volt. So uh, you do have to be on shore power to power this. The other two, two things that will not work on 12 volt are the big products. Obviously you've got your microwave and your air conditioner, but everything else pretty much in the trailer will work on the 12 volt for the solar panels. Um, it's got a nice fridge freezer combo. So it's pretty standard freezer pretty standard fridge. It is a little loud because I just turned the trailer on from being off, but it's pretty nice. I mean, it holds just about everything you need to hold. 
Uh, it's going to have drink holders and components for that, and the freezer actually works pretty good. It's got adjustable controls in there for, um, you know, if you want to make it colder or warmer. And then when you're not using it, you can go ahead and seal that up and keep the torus from going up. So on this side of the trailer, you can see the bunks. Um, you're going to have a top bunk, which does have a ladder underneath there. I haven't used it because my son's uh, small enough to climb in there, but you've got the actual top bunk and the bottom bunk. They are identical. So the last part of the tour is going to be the bathroom, which is a pretty straightforward bathroom. There is no sink, but it does have a porcelain toilet with a floor flush component. We've had no issues with that so far. There's also a mirror on the right side with all your plugs, uh, GFI type plugs. That way you can uh, uh, power some other components if need be. There are two very small cabinets right here that allow you to store toiletries and such. And uh, there is actually already a little shelf here built in with, uh, you know, for your toothbrushes and stuff like that. At top here at the trailer is going to be the actual max uh, air vent fan, which allows you to open that up and get that air flowing in here. There is a light, although I feel like there's never need to use it during the day because of this skylight right here. It's a pretty nice little skylight that goes into the shower. The shower is pretty straightforward RV type shower. You're gonna have your RV head here. This is, and I don't know what they call this, but this is essentially a recycling sink. This allows you to recycle the water. So if you're uh, powering the uh, water heater or whatever, you can use this to wash. You don't have to waste a bunch of water either by turning it off, that off and on. And it's a pretty standard shower. Like I said, I'm anywhere from six foot to six foot one. And I might, the top of my head is in the skylight. So as far as the skylight goes, just be mindful that if you're taller than 6'1", you may have to uh, duck down to get into the shower. But, uh, you know, in an RV, what can you expect for, the, for this size? So far, I have been able to utilize both the heater and the air conditioner. The air conditioner works exceptional. Uh, it does have multiple fan modes, high, low, you know, uh, fan cool and uh, high fan high and fan low cool. It does work great. It's, it's worked in 100, almost 100 degree weather and it functioned flawlessly. At night, there is a kind of an interesting little thing that if you don't follow the instructions and turn the uh, cold down, when it hits a certain temperature, the AC will stop blowing cold and it sure enough did the first time we used it. So just be mindful of that. But other than that, it worked function, it functioned flawlessly. We did get to use the heater for about 10 minutes the other day and that's all it took. Then the trailer was at the temperature we wanted it and we turned it off. So I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time, but uh, if someone came to me and said, hey, Jesse, what's the top three features of this trailer that you would recommend? Number one would be its modern look and features. Everything in the trailer just looks modern. If you compare it to another trailer of a similar price point, they look old, they look bland. This trailer looks nice. Sitting next to other trailers, it, people have been wowed by the appearance of this versus say a Zinger model, and not bashing on Zingers, but those types of models are a little more uh, campground-esque, more like deer campground trailers. The second reason I would recommend it is because of everything in it. I mean, you've got everything you can think of, solar panels, inverters, it's got the electric awning, the electric jack, uh, all the, you know, like I said, the, the heated uh, tank, tank heater, great wonderful feature if you're in, especially in a colder environment so that would be the second reason and the third reason overall would be the price point i mean it's it's in the high 20s i've seen a lot of other trailers in the high 20s and you get a lot for it you know if you're a family of, of four or five and that is what you're looking for in a trailer i mean this is one to really heavily consider i would highly recommend looking at it for any new rv owners or anyone that's owned one in the past you're going to be pleasantly surprised with what you're going to get uh, for that price. I hope this walkthrough was helpful to you if you're considering purchasing this unit or you're just interested in looking at other RV models. I'm going to do a follow-up video in about a year and I will add it in the description below. So if the video is a year old, be sure to check that out. Otherwise, I really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. This is Jesse with The Wandering Manus. Till next time. So the trailer's got three key components. Oh, I'm not saying that again.